okay I'm back that was my alarm for my medication so this is going to be part two let me get um before I forget let me get my medication and I'll continue my skunk story so this will be part two I apologize for that. I don't know how to do any editing. I don't do editing. Nor do I want to take the time to learn how to do it. Because I'd rather just stitch. Alright, let me take this. Hold on a moment. Okay. Just in time. Alright. So, um, I grabbed her. And of course grabbed onto her collar which then pulled over her head so I had to kind of be pinching her skin and I'm like pleading with her please 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 just come in the house so I can I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here for you so that uh, we could go upstairs so because she had been sprayed a few times in the past I had that big bottle of de skunker well you know it's early morning the writing on the bottle could they make it any smaller for us older people so I, there was a, three pictures. One was to wet her with it. Two was to let it sit for five minutes. And three was a picture of hands washing. So I took her, pinched her, and was pleading with her, almost crying in tears, to please come upstairs in the tub, not to touch anything. I wasn't sure exactly where she got sprayed. And got her in a tub and squeezed all you know the, the liquid over her and tried to let it set for five minutes. But I mean, I don't know where she got sprayed because when it happened before in the past, when a, when a skunk sprays your animal outside, we know what that smells like, right? But when it comes in the house, it's more like a fuel oil smell. It's ungodly. And I didn't smell the fuel oil. I just smelled very light skunk. So whether it was in her face, I, I, I don't know where. But um, so we did that and then of course I felt like I had it on me so I jumped in the shower took all those clothes put them all in the washer with hot water and washed everything and I still faintly smell it um, but this weekend now and I know I usually want to wait till September but um, I decorate and change my bathroom I know I'm goofy right um, how many of you decorate your bathrooms for holidays Right now I had the flamingos for the summer and I thought, you know, it's time to bring out the fall. I felt fall was in the air, but today it's like summer. So I took all of the stuff off, the, you know, all the flamingos are down and today I'm washing all of the um, things for the fall, which the fall I have is, um, like with sunflowers and all the fall colors, the shower curtain, you know, all those kind of decorative things. I make decorative things for the walls. I decorate the embroidered towels. Now you notice that this is running much better on a slower speed. So my recommendation if you're doing freestanding lace is to slow your speed down a little bit. Slow it down and um, I'm not having any issues, knock on wood. So yeah, when I'm done with this, um, I have my, when I washed the last load of clothes, I did some of the towels and some of the blankets downstairs because I still felt like they had like a scent. You know, you get the scent of like skunk in your lungs and I think it just stays there. So um, I'll have to put my bathroom back together again or I won't be able to take a shower. Um, yeah, so I... I love doing that. I love decorating my home. Um, I've been bringing out some of the fall things. Slowly I'll be putting the summer things away. And you know, just sitting with my, um, I, I love the battery illuminated candles on my mantle. Um, I just love decorating and making my home a happy place because this is where I spend my time. Like I'm here all the time and I love my home and um, things like that just make me happy and you know when you're having a sad day do something that makes you happy you know don't don't think about all the things that could happen you know we all know things can happen and you don't want to dwell on that you want to dwell on happiness you want to dwell on things that make you happy so yeah 
So this gunk thing wasn't too bad. And you know, I thank Jesus every day. I thank Jesus in the morning, during the day, before I go to bed, if my feet hit the floor in the morning, it's a thankful day to Jesus for giving me an, another day on this earth another day to make the best of the day that I possibly can. Maybe make something and send something to someone just to brighten their day just because you're thinking of them. And you know, life is too short to dwell on things. So I do things that make me happy and surround myself with happiness. Now I'm not saying I have, you know, look at her, she's so happy, you know. No, that's not the case all the time. I'm not always so happy. But, you know, when you get those sad thoughts, go through it. Let it go. Find something to change your mood. Call a friend. Do a craft. Um, bake a cake. Make cookies that flatten out that look like crap. And I don't know what happened to my oatmeal cookies, but... I don't know, they flattened out and they looked like crap. But you know what? I thought if I got vanilla ice cream, I could crumble them up and put them in the vanilla ice cream and that would be fabulous. So you make something good out of something bad. And besides, I went on Amazon and I bought cookies already made that I'm just going to throw them, pre they're individually packaged, throw them in the freezer. And when I want a cookie, I don't have to go and make them. But so, yeah. So that's my head. Let's see what else happened this week. Um, I did my uh, Facebook Live last night on Friday. I had a great time. My class today online had a great time. And now I'm sharing my Saturday evening with you, making some gnome Christmas ornaments. That would be wonderful to make a gnome card and insert these with just a little note thinking of you. And, um,. You know, perhaps this little happy gnome will brighten someone's day, you know? Just little things in life. That's all you need to do to make yourself and spread a little cheer to others that, you know, need it as well. We all need a little cheer here and there, so why not, right? So I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm just looking to get my other thread out see what my other machine is doing sitting here idle by itself let me roll around here hopefully not knock everything over okay oh so this one's gonna need the eyeballs so I'm gonna need the white thread over there so we'll let that gnome work while we move over to the um, other machine so how many of you have more than one machine this one I bought second hand. I know I've explained about Bad Bob and Betty before. So she was a second hand machine. The woman that had her hardly had any stitches on her because I guess she realized after she bought her that um, she only did up to a five by seven hoop. And you know what? That's okay because a lot of the things I do, they, um, Okay, we're going to do the white eyeballs on that one. They're five by seven hoops. Now, I just did purchase for her a four... Oops. Hold on there, Bella, Betty. Sucking the thread spool in. I did buy for her a four by four hoop because I wanted to do, run some gnomes on her as well. But um, I think I have... Now, this um, girl that contacted me that wanted the sunshines she wanted first she said five and then she said 25 and i thought oh my 25 i think i have 13 and um what i was figuring the other day was i was trying to do like five a day if i had two machines going if i do five a day but then i ran out of stabilizer so i couldn't do any more but if i have them both running I hope it's not too loud. Can you hear? They're both running. Now, the other one runs a slow speed as well. So maybe we're doing okay with that. But I, you know, gnomes. How many of you love gnomes? Raise your hand. Yell it out. Put it in the comments. I really think doing a little spritz of some uh, glittery spray on these will really make a difference. And I think they'd be very beautiful on a tree. And I'm very excited for them. But I want to do the whole, a whole bunch of them, and then I'll sit and I'll do the macrame cord on them to, um, to complete them. I'm trying to decide 
I think the next one I want to do, I want to do different colors. I don't want to, well, of course I'll have to do a green one. I think I'm going to do blue. And look at these little, anybody have any use for these little, what do you do with these little tubes that are left? I'm going to put it over there on the floor. I mean, I know I can recycle it, but anybody have any advice what to do with those? I think I'm going to do blue. Let's see. There we are. Here's the blue. Oh, my threads got lost behind the curtain. Don't hide behind the curtain. I think I'm going to do this um, royal blue color next. So I have my matching bobbin that goes with it. I bought this a while ago, and, and it's in the other room. I haven't used it yet to um, do the spools, to thread the spools. So I'm excited to see if that will work. Oh, now I need a black over there for the eyeballs. So let me, as long as that's still working. And I did order a new chair. I know you're thinking, Sue, you're spending the money. No, the chair is like $25. This chair that I'm sitting on right now was a chair that was given to me by my daughter. And, you know, thank you, Michelle. But it is so cumbersome. It is like a big leather office chair. I'm looking for my thread. There it is. And it has these big arms on it. And this room that I'm working in is a, a bedroom, a small, small bedroom. And every time I'm in this chair and I swing around, I'm forever knocking over a table or knocking over things. And it is so annoying. Oh, can I tell you how annoying it is? It's so annoying. So I went on Amazon and I found a chair that is for small, small space, small chair, no arms, enough to put my butt in and um, I ordered it so it should be coming next week and it said assembly was easy it had good reviews so I told my daughter I said I need to get rid of this chair I can't stand it it's knocking over everything and it's not adjustable it's an older chair and it's wide you know of course you know I'm wide but I've lost a lot of weight since the the cancer but it's just so annoying. So she said, well, how is, how is it? I said, well, it's like how you gave it to me. I mean, it's not 100%. It's, you know. So she said she'll take it back. So good. I won't have to worry about getting rid of it. So she's going to take her chair back. And um, the new chair will come. And I think I'll be a lot more happier. And stop knocking into everything. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. The struggles of life, right? The us crafters, what we have to do in our lives. Oh my goodness. But it's the little things that make us happy, right? It doesn't take much to make us happy. A little embroidery, a little, you know, spool of thread here and there. Okay, so it looks like we are at 39 minutes. We have up to 42. So we got about another 5,000 stitches. Finishing up the beard part. Let's zoom in on that if we can. Oh, maybe not. So it's doing that little fringy part on the bottom. But yeah, I will put the information down below uh, in the description where the design came from and check it out and see if it's still on sale. You could save yourself a couple dollars. And um, yeah. So finishing up uh, the little mouth and the eyes on this other little guy here. All right, so let's trim that. Lift this up. Change my thread. And what I'm going to do next on this is going to be to put the backing on it. thread here there's number six on this that it's very tight to um, to get the thread through all right let me take it over to 
the side and tape on the backing. I like to use tape to put the backing on because sometimes it can slip and we don't want it to slip. That happened to one of them and I ended up, I couldn't save it, I had to throw it out. And I was so sad because I got all the way to do the back and the back got all scrunched and crunched and yuckied up. So let's put some tape on here to keep it down from flipping. To hold that in place. All right, I'm going to put that back in the machine. Oh, I heard that. Did y'all hear that? Okay. I'm going to stitch the backing onto there. Let's go back over here and see what the problem was. The thread again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. So let's re-thread. Okay, let's go back over to, be to Betty. All right, let me show you Betty. There's Betty. Now what I have to do is I have to trim around. Well, the gnome is finishing up there next on the gnome will be the um, the nose. So those of you that are embroiderous, let me know down below. What are you working on? Are you starting to think Christmas and holidays? you do things with uh, Halloween. There's a whole bunch of downloads I just got um, through um, Newfoundland. I believe it was Newfoundland um, embroidery. And there's a whole bunch of free designs on there. I found them through Facebook. I follow them. And they put out new designs all the time. A lot of free ones. A lot of little things. Um, there's one that reminds me of this sunshine and it's actually you attach ribbons to it and I'm going to make that for my granddaughter because she you attach the ribbons and then she can um, well my daughter can put her bows on it and hang it so when she needs you know a bow they're all nice and organized and hanging on this ribbon holder and it has a sunshine just like these coasters that I'm making. And there was a, quite a few that were very cute. And they actually reached out to me and wanted to know what my thoughts were on the designs. But um, at the time, I hadn't stitched them out yet. So, oop, I'm not, there I go with this chair. It's knocking my table over. I'm telling you. But I caught it before my laptop hit the floor. So I told them, I said, you know, that I was going through a bout of not feeling well, but as soon as I stitch them, I will let them know 
Um, I recently was just um, contacted by another company to review some of their scrapbook paper, which came today. And, uh, you know, I ordered uh, the Halloween one and then they reimburse you for it. And then they want your honest opinion, what you think of, you know, their product. And um, so I'll have to check that out. That'll be the next video I do. And they want you to uh, do a review for them and a review uh, from Amazon because you order it through Amazon and then they reimburse me through my PayPal. So I'll have to check that out. So I, I do like to keep busy. People say, you know, you, you do keep busy and yes, yes, I do like to keep busy. There are some days where, you know, I'm sort of lazy bones in the morning, but that's okay. You know, I can do that. You can do that, right? You'd be lazy bones if you want. All right, now I'm trimming the back. I see where it did catch a little bit back here, but I don't think it's gonna interfere. We'll see. Once it does the satin stitch going all around, I don't think, it's very hard to see this back here. Hmm. Should've used a darker thread on the back here. I'll do my best to trim this out and then I'll put this one the little sunshine back in Betty and um, it'll do the satin stitch all around and then that'll be another coaster done so Debbie if you're watching I'm working on them if once when someone asks me to do something I I hate to procrastinate and put things off one of the reasons being because you just don't know what may come up next and um, if I promise someone that you know I'm going to do something I sure as heck want to do it I hate to let people down um, because I, I don't like that happening to me if someone says they're going to do something and you know you're looking forward to that and that person is looking forward to you know whatever it is they promised and then you know you let them down you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot that goes on here because um, I do live, you know, myself. And when someone says that they're going to do something and you look forward to it. Now, I understand things come up, you know, that is totally understandable. But, you know, I, I don't like to disappoint people, you know. Now, you know, of course, I also have to be honest with myself and with them. And, you know, if it's something that I don't think I would be able to do, you know, I do have to be honest and say, well, you know, maybe we can compromise and maybe I can do this or, you know, that kind of thing. But, but the thought of, um, you know, and of course, Debbie said she will pay me for these. And I appreciate that because I could use that, you know, around the holidays are coming. Also, my three grandchildren, their birthdays are all right in a row. Um, Travis's is in November. Delilah's is in December. And Preston's is in January. And then in the midst of all of that, you have Thanksgiving, which I normally do Thanksgiving dinner, but everyone brings something. That's how we do our thanks, our meals. Everyone brings, everyone helps out. Um, the person that hosts it is the one that does the cooking of the meat. And let me tell you why that is. Because the one year after my mom passed, and you know, a lot of things change when the glue of the family is no longer there, things change. So that's how we started doing, you know, with holidays. Um, we take turns having them now, it's just, myself and my son now my brother has moved back to uh, the delaware area and i'm in pennsylvania so maybe um him and his family will be able to join us which would be fun okay so let's see let me check the front and just touch up and then i will put this back into betty and um finish the satin stitch on on this and then this coaster will be done 
So that's what we do for holidays. We take turns and uh, the person does the meat. So the one year, you know, everybody's like, okay, well, I'll do this part of the meal. I'll do that part of the meal. And it was going to be held. Sorry, I'm like blowing the little fibers away. It was going to be held at my son's and it was Thanksgiving and no one signed up for the turkey. So, of course, here's mama here, you know, like I, of course, always do the pies and everything. Okay, so here is the little son. Look at how cute that is. So I'm going to put this back over into Betty and then I'll come back to Bob. So I said, all right, I'll do the turkey. So I get a turkey. This is a few years ago after my mom passed. I'll get the turkey. So, of course, you know, mama got to get the biggest turkey she can. 23 pound turkey. So here I am, I'm baking the turkey in my oven, and then I'm like, oh, well, I gotta get it to my son's house. So, now think of it, 23 pound turkey out of the oven, you gotta transport it. Who's thinking of that, right? So, so I'm like, all right, what a struggle between the turkey. So I have this color here for the nose. I have the turkey and I have the pies. So I made apple pie, pumpkin pie. I think I only made two pies, apple and pumpkin. I don't know if I made cookies or not. But anyhow, I had to transport this 23 pound fully cooked turkey in my car with the pies, hot turkey. So from then on, we said, okay, new rules. The new rules is whoever is hosting at their house, they have to cook the meat because it's too much to have to. Now, of course, Christmas is a lot different, you know, because Christmas you have, you know, ham and things like that. And it's a lot, a lot easier to transport, but those are the rules. The house does <laughs> the meat. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the nose on our gnome. And then that gnome will be complete. Betty's over there doing her thing. Going all around that. Let's get a drink. Oh. Speaking of drinks, um, I, um, I love those bubblies. And I just got a new one. It's a coconut pineapple. Oh, delicious. If I was a drinker and you add a little bit of alcohol to that, I'll tell you, that would make a nice drink. But I realized I was in my freezer and I had bought a while ago little plastic ice cubes that have, you know, I'm assuming it's water inside. I don't know what's inside it. And I thought, you know what? Because usually I put the ice in there and, you know, the, the ice doesn't dissolve because these insulated cups and you're left with ice and nothing to drink. So I started using them in my cup and adding my water to it. So then it doesn't dilute and you're able to fill it all up with water and put the ice cubes, the plastic ice cubes in it, and it's working out fabulously. I'm so happy, <laughs> so happy. Who would think plastic ice cubes would make you happy, right? So there's our nose, zoomed in on our nose. Um, let's see, we're almost done with this. We got about another 700 stitches on here to go and then we'll be done with this. So the nose is the quickest part. but I'm loving the gnomes. Love, love me some gnomies. I think after this, I'll take a break and I'll go downstairs and I made myself for lunch. I was dying for salad last week and I had to wait for payday this week um, from the government in order to get um, my groceries delivered. And I bought this big bag of salad. So today I took a whole dinner plate and I loaded it with salad. I had some chicken left over. I had some turkey left over. Um, I cut up some strawberries. Um, I cut up some cheese. I'm gonna have to cook some hard boiled eggs because I like to have eggs. And the whole plate was just loaded with salad. And can I tell you how much I enjoyed that? It was so good, it was so refreshing. Oh, I just loved it. And um, tomorrow I'm going to make halushki. Do y'all know what halushki is? I'm Polish. Halushki is um, cabbage, onions, and noodles. So that's my plan for tomorrow is to make a small little pot of halushki for myself. Last time I made it, I don't know, I was lacking something. So I was watching some videos and I mean, that's all that's in it, 
you know, oh, and lots of butter. And well, I've been losing weight, so I feel like I could treat myself to some halushki. So I got a small head of cabbage I ordered from Walmart, and um, I got, I buy frozen onions, you know, already in the bag because, you know, I, I don't really eat a lot of potatoes. I buy frozen sweet potatoes. Everything I buy is frozen. I don't really like canned vegetables. Oh, I think we're done. Yes, we are. I don't like canned vegetables. I like frozen. Okay, so let's take this out of the hoop. Well, out of the machine. And there it is. Look at that. Let's look at the back. Flippa, flippa, flippa. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So now what I'm going to do is before I take it out of the hoop, I'm going to take my scissors and any little loose threads, I'm going to trim it while it's still in the hoop. And Betty's still going, chugging along. But I would definitely recommend if you're doing the freestanding lace, make sure you put in a new needle and slow down the speed. That seems to have worked. I think, was it only once, maybe twice that I had to stop? Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. So beautiful. So I'm going to pop it out of here. And there it is. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to remove the excess around it. And then all I'll have to do is run some warm water and let this run over the underneath the warm water and the remainder of the stabilizer will just melt away. Now what some people like to do is they will take a little container and um, run the warm water and save the liquid and then what they do is they'll put it in a spray bottle and you can use it as a stiffening agent. So all of this that's left over, if you take this and put it in a bottle with some warm water, it'll make a stiffening agent and then you can spritz, you know, whatever it is you want to use to, uh, to spritz and to use it as a stiffener. So no sense in wasting it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get a small, I'm sure I have a spray bottle somewhere. So yeah, there's our gnome. Let me find my other gnomes. So we have a pink gnome. We have a purple gnome. And a red gnome. But look how beautiful they are. I absolutely love them. And like I said, I will um, finish them up. I will post a picture. If you're not yet a member of um, the Facebook group, it's Stitching with Sue on Facebook. Now, word to the wise. There are three questions that you must, M-U-S-T, you must answer in order to be admitted to the group. If you don't admit, if you don't answer them, even if you miss one, you will be declined because we've had some issues in the past with people trying to sell things and not follow the rules. I want to keep everyone safe on that site. So in order to do so, that means they have to read the questions and answer them. So please don't be offended. Even if you've been a member and it pops up, just please answer them. If they're just simple, you know, how did you hear about me? Do you have a broader machine? What kind? And do you, um, and the, the one that people never answer is the last one, which just says that you will agree to follow the rules. So that's, you know, it's not asking for your firstborn child. So that's all you have to do. So don't be offended by that, but it's for all of our safety. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's for your safety. Whether you've been a member, you're a brand new member, but you can come and you can post all of your embroidery projects. If you find an embroidery design that's maybe free or that you, um, you created something with, feel free to share that. But please don't post anything as far as other things like Timu, like sign up for this and you'll get that. And, you know, I mean, I was finding a lot of that kind of stuff. I was finding a lot of nasty things on there. And um, that was my fault. And I, I agree that was my fault for not um, improvising 
from the very beginning different questions. I didn't think I had to do that, but you know this day and age, that's just what you have to do. So, all right, I'm gonna leave you now. So don't forget to start off with part one of this video until my alarm went off for my medication, then it cut into part two. So this will be posted in two separate parts. So please be sure to watch part one and then to watch part two and then come on over to Stitching with Sue on Facebook and join our group and you'll be able to see the finished design once I run the macrame cord through it and pretty it all up and get it all gorge for the upcoming holidays. I wish you the best of the rest of your day and your weekend. Please be safe out there. If you like what you see and you enjoy the chit chat and you want to be a part of this, hit the subscribe button. That helps my channel immensely. Leave a comment, give me the thumbs up, share, whatever you have to do will help my channel. My goal for this channel is to teach people how to use their embroidery machine, to craft, to stamp, to whatever it is that I enjoy, I want to share it with everyone else. And of course, my long-term goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers. And I know that's a lot, but we can do it. We all work together, we can do it. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, happy stitching. Bye for now.